Performance Max is one of the most powerful campaign structures that most brands are wasting thousands every single month because they don't know how to optimize it. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the top five ways to optimize your Performance Max campaigns for better results. That might be more sales, a better ROAS, and far less wasted advertising spend. These are the exact strategies that we've used to optimize hundreds of Performance Max campaigns and generate over 80 million in revenue for the likes of Jackson Bones, Florence London, Besame Cosmetics, and many more direct to consumer brands. Make sure you stay around until tip number five, as it's arguably the most important, and this tip alone has contributed to millions in additional revenue for our clients. And if you're an e-commerce brand spending above 4K on ads right now, and you're not happy with the performance of your ads, it could be revenue, it could be ROAS, and go ahead and schedule some time on my calendar below. We'll have a quick conversation before we perform a completely free Google Ads audit for you. Seven to 10 pages long, completely packed, full of value, showing you how you could be getting better performance out of your ads. But apart from that, let's jump straight into the video. Tip number one is segmentation and prioritization. When you're brand new to Performance Max, it's absolutely fine to dump everything in one campaign and ultimately allow yourself to gather some purchase data and start selling your products online. However, once you have that data, once you've got hundreds of conversions inside that campaign, you can then begin to segment. Building a structure that allows you to prioritize your best sellers, build and test your mid performers, and remove any products that are underperforming and draining your advertising budget. Here's what we see time and time again. You've got your top performers, you've got your mid performers, and you've got your low performers. Now imagine these are buckets with your products in. Top performers tend to make up around 20% of your inventory. These are products that do incredibly well. They perform consistently for you. They achieve above ROAS and revenue benchmarks that you've set. You've got your mid performers, which is roughly between 40 and 50% of your inventory. And these are products that they sell, but they might not be achieving ROAS and revenue goals, but they do sell somewhat consistently. And finally, you've got your low performers. Now this might be 20, 30, 40% of your entire inventory, depending on the business, but they don't sell, they never sell, they get terrible performance and they ultimately drain your advertising budget. The brand spending above 4,000 a month, here is the structure that we recommend to improve performance. Number one, you have a best seller campaign. You take your current consolidated performance match campaign with your top performing, mid performing and low performing products in it, and you remove your mid performing and low performing products from that campaign. The reason why you do this is you remove your low performers so you don't see a drop in sales from removing your top performers and putting them in a new campaign and having to go through learnings time and time again. Rename this your best sellers campaign. This is going to be your revenue driving campaign for the account. Number two is you create a mid performing campaign. Create a new performance max for this category. Let it run with no target ROAS so it can learn as quickly as possible. Once you have the benchmark data, begin layering in a target ROAS and then start heavily testing offers and assets, promotions, ultimately trying to improve the performance of these mid-performing products. Combine this with merchant center optimizations, things like promotions, title optimizations, feed improvements, and try to improve the performance of your mid-performing products and ultimately get them more consistently driving sales. Number three is your low-performing campaign. As I mentioned, products that don't sell very well, and this might make up 30% of your inventory. Keep bids and spend minimal and stop them from draining budget. Still test your merchant center optimizations, still try and improve the quality of the ads. Ultimately, sometimes these products can turn themselves around but given the fact that they've consistently underperformed up until today probably not going to perform very well for you in the future either so test them and continue testing them don't spend too much time on it if they do start to perform better you can begin thinking about maybe graduating them up to the mid-performing campaign or even up to the top performing campaign if they really do start performing well for you. Now, just a warning on these three campaign types, and I think I mentioned it right at the start as well, but do not strip out your best sellers and create a campaign for your best sellers and leave everything that's doing mid to low performance on inside the main campaign. You want to strip out those products that aren't performing as well, e.g. your mid performers and your low performers and make separate campaigns for them as well because you ultimately damage control, right? So if you were to pull all of your best sellers out there's a chance that for a couple of weeks whilst the algorithm learns you're going to see worse performance from your ads and you definitely don't want that so make sure that you're stripping out your low performers and your mid performers and keeping that core campaign with your best sellers in so it continues to learn off the already previous learnings that it's had. Now, just quickly for smaller brands doing less than 4K a month, what you can do to sort of replicate a similar structure is basically just have your core campaign and just begin pulling products out of there that aren't performing as well. But 
don't bother making a second and third campaign for mid and low performing products. Just strip out the stuff that's not working. Ultimately, if you've got a small budget, you'd rather spend it on products that are working. So just continue slowly but surely to strip out products that aren't working and you'll see better performance from your ads. So bottom line here is segmentation gives you far more control. It allows you to control your spend on your top performers. It allows you to test those mid performers and it allows you to reduce budget on those low performing products. Tip number two is feed optimizations. We mentioned this briefly in the first one. Feed optimizations are the backbone of your performance max campaigns. Once you've segmented your campaigns into top performers, mid performers, and low performers, the next thing to focus on is your feed. Here's what we found after running performance max. Majority of top performing campaigns with performance max tend to spend most of their budget on shopping. And so what comes side by side with shopping is feed optimizations, improving the quality of the ads that are being shown on shopping. Every impression, click and conversion starts with the data that you feed to Google. If that data isn't optimized, Google has no idea to match your products to searches on Google. Here's what to focus on. Title packed keywords. Make sure you're including things like brand, product type, size, material, color, and actual search terms in your product titles. Images, test lifestyle images versus studio images. We found that depending on the ad account, one works better than the other, and then double down on that. Review extensions, you can pull through the reviews from your Trustpilot or your reviews.io or whatever platform you're using to collect reviews and show them on your shopping ads. This builds trust and it builds credibility and improves your click-through rate of the ads. And then promotions, promotions in Merchant Center for new customers, for returning customers, for promos, for seasonality. Try and keep things fresh. So why does this even matter? Even if your campaign structure is perfect, if your feed quality is weak, Google will not know who to show your products to. But with an optimized feed, you're showing Google what you sell, who your customers are, and giving Google the best chance it can to put as many ads in front of high quality customers as possible. As an example, feed optimizations alone, primarily title optimizations, improved impressions by 130% for a brand that we've just started working with. So just to summarize, structure controls your budget, feed controls who you're targeting, and both of them combined will allow you to see massive improvements in your performance max campaigns. Tip number three is asset group optimization. Even with segmentation, there are some big limitations inside performance max campaigns. Google only gives you 15 headlines, 15 short descriptions, 15 long descriptions, five videos, and 20 images to work with. This becomes a problem if your best sellers campaign mixes lots of different products. For example, if you're selling bracelets, earrings, and rings all in the same campaign, your ads are forced to be broad. This could mean that someone that's looking for rings ends up seeing ad copy talking about bracelets or more broadly about the brand, which can reduce the relevance and decrease the CTR. So to fix this, we want to use asset groups so we can have category level granularity. Create separate asset groups for your different categories or for your different baskets. So for us, this could be bracelets, it could be rings, earrings, all in different asset groups and write ad copy that speaks directly to the different products in these asset groups. So for bracelets, we could talk about the type of bracelets, the colors available, the durability. For rings, we could talk about the sizing and the styles and the shipping times. And for necklaces, we could talk about the personalization to them, the unboxing, the delivery times, the seasonality. You know, ultimately we can be more granular about how we're approaching these ads if we have asset groups broken out into different product segments. By doing this, every ad matches the product that someone's searching for, which will just improve your click-through rates and improve the relevance of your ads. So one thing to note here is that if you have got these ads running, you've got these asset groups running, every sort of like two to four weeks, go in them, have a look at the performance of the different ad assets in this asset group. Could be headlines, could be uh, long descriptions, short descriptions, images, videos, and look at how they're performing from a click-through rate perspective. If they're not performing very well, strip them out and replace them with a different piece of content that you've got. If you see a piece of content doing really well, a headline or a description doing really well. Why is it done well? How can we improve it? How can we add another variation into the campaign similar to that? And that will ultimately begin iterating better performance ads over time. So for the jewelry brand that we work with, by doing this, we were able to decrease their CPA, which is their cost per conversion by 20% plus. So to summarize, 
Segmentation allows you to control your budget. The feed makes sure you're reaching the right people. And then your ad group segmentation makes sure that you're improving your ad relevance and ultimately speaking to those customers that are looking for you. Tip number four is brand exclusions. One of the biggest complaints I hear about Performance Max is that our on-platform sales, our Google sales look great, our ROAS looks amazing, but we're not actually seeing our sales go up on our Shopify dashboard and we're not seeing new customers coming into our business. Here's what's happening. Performance Max loves loves easy wins. Repeat customers, people searching for your brand name, and on paper, the ROAS looks amazing, but most of those sales are going towards people that may have already purchased from you before and just needed that little nudge, which means you're not actually growing your new customer base. Here's how to fix it. First, we need to check where spend is going. So in Shopify, look at your new versus returning customers. Now, if you're not seeing too many new customers, this is a problem. And in Google Ads, you can check your insights tab where you'll be able to see some of the searches, some of the search themes that your ads have been shown on. And if you see lots of your brand name in there, that more than likely means that you're remarketing to customers too heavily as well. Now to fix this, we're gonna turn on brand exclusions. In your campaign settings, exclude your brand name from being shown and this stops performance max from pouring spend into your branded searches and you can get far cheaper through a small branded search campaign and then if you want to take this one step further you can go into your settings and prioritize new customer acquisition this tells google to prioritize new customers over returning ones when it's promoting your ads for many of our clients we have seen a 30 percent plus increase in new customer sales just from doing this and in many cases this can turn a plateauing google ads account into a new customer a growth engine. So why does this matter? Well, your warm audience is finite. If you keep showing ads repeatedly to people that have already purchased from you before, eventually they're going to stop purchasing and you're going to run out of people to show ads to. By excluding brand terms, you essentially push Google to go outside of returning customers and people that have purchased from you before and look for lots of new customers and promote growth for your business through Performance Max. So to summarize, structure, feed and assets improve the performance of your ads and the brand exclusions make sure that you're going out and finding lots of new customers and promoting growth for your business and finally tip number five which a lot of brands miss is first party data one of the most powerful things you can do with your google ads account is make sure that you're feeding your pmax campaigns your performance max campaigns with the highest quality data data that you already own about your best customers think about it like this your structure and your feed tell google what to sell and first party data tells Google who to sell it to. You can upload lists like past purchases, subscribers to your newsletter, VIPs, promotional lists, anything like that, and give Google data that you've collected from your customers to ultimately allow it to better understand who your ideal customer is. Now, if you have lots of past customer data and thousands and thousands of purchases, you can choose to only put in that sort of 20 to 30% of your top performing VIP customers to make sure that this list is as powerful as possible. So what happens as a result of doing this? Well, Google learns exactly who your customers are, and so it can better go off and find more of them for you. So in accounts where we layer in third-party data, we typically see quicker campaign learnings, lower CPAs, more sales, and ultimately improved performance from them campaigns. So to summarize, don't let Google guess who your customers are, feed them that first-party data, and allow you to scale past the learnings quicker and quicker and quicker. So I know we said there's five points that we're going to cover and we have covered all five of them now but I just want to give you two bonus tips that will help massively with just campaign settings and ultimately improving the performance of your ads. Bonus tip number one is geo-targeting and location-based settings. So by default the setting that will be on is people in or regularly interested in your target location. That means if you only ship to the US or you ship to the UK that people that are interested in your location, people that are searching for US-based companies but based here in the UK might still see your ads and ultimately that's just complete wasted clicks, complete wasted spend if you can't serve those customers with products. So this is a very simple fix. Go to your location settings and change targeting to presence people in or regularly in your target location. For one of our clients, this single change saw a 20% drop in irrelevant clicks. So very important to do this, super simple and it takes less than 30 seconds to click and add into your account. And bonus tip number 
two is to turn off automatically created assets. So by default, Google automatically turns on automatically created assets. That means that Google can literally scrape your website and auto generate things like headlines and descriptions for your ads. It sounds good in theory, but ultimately it often leads to irrelevant off-brand headlines and descriptions being generated. And ultimately you have no control at what your ads look like. And for premium and luxury brands or brands that are in specific like high regulation spaces, those are risks that you can't take. And ultimately you've invested in strong imagery and strong videos and strong assets for your brand. You don't want them to be replaced with auto-generated assets. So to fix this, go into your campaign settings and turn off automatically generated assets. That way only the copy and creative you've approved for your ads will run and you're not relying on Google's AI to generate your messaging for you. So those are the five final ways to optimize your performance max campaigns with two bonus tips to help you stop wasted spend. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm replying to everyone at the moment. And if you're an e-commerce brand spending above 4,000 a month right now on your ads, but you're not happy with the performance, it could be revenue, it could be ROAS, you could just believe that you could get better performance out of your ads, then go ahead and schedule a completely free audit from my team and I below. Seven to 10 pages long, completely packed full of value. And we will report that back to you in a PDF document once you schedule some time for a quick conversation with myself below. It's the first link in the description and you can grab that time on my calendar. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Like I say, if you found any value whatsoever, consider giving us a like or a subscribe and we'll be posting new videos weekly. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.